following last week's video on my uh, failure to connect many servers to a light strip, I'm going to use the solution I talked about last week uh, using a 16 server controller. And I've got a bit of a treat because I'm going to be building, I think, one of the more awesome robots in my collection. I had a bunch of mailbag items to start this. We have a big box of servos and I've ordered lots of these tiny little micro servo 9Gs or SG90s. Adafruit controller that I mentioned last week which gives me 16 channels. A node MCU, so this will use one I2C. I should be able to get two more PWM outputs from here, giving me 18 channels. And then there's this, so. This is the chassis and legs of a hexapod robot. So we're going to build a six-legged multi-servo beast of a robot using these and all these servos controlling it with these two devices which should fit somewhere on top of here and I might be able to minimize this and put a 12E in or something you know something smaller. So this hexapod hasn't come with any instructions at all so I'm going to be going entirely on gut. Now I may go have a quick look at the place I bought it. This hexapod came via hobby components and I actually bought this in my local Amazon. I'm going to check and see if I can find any instructions for it. Now, the model number for this is the HCROB O zero zero two eight. This is one of those times when Jonathan would say Not again upon seeing many many tiny laser cut acrylic parts with backing. It's worth observing that I got the same parts with two different kinds of backing. Some with this paper backing, some with this uh, plasticky backing. So this part with the plasticky backing has got a smoother finish there's a rougher finish on the ones with the paper backing. On this particular part, and I've now peeled a few of them, there is this little bit sticking out here. I don't believe that's supposed to be there. I believe that that's perhaps where they needed to have a bit more of an overlap on the uh, end of the cut with the laser. I don't think it'll get in the way of normal operation. It's just a little bit ugly. Perhaps once I've assembled it all, I'll have a go at seeing if I can uh, cut or file it off. Let's try and make one complete leg assembly and start to then mirror it and make the others. Okay, so the first part is I've put the servo horn on top of that there. That shaft looks like it's in the middle, but if it isn't, I've got this screw here that I can loosen it. Now there's a smaller screw in the packet with each servo horn. I can tighten that in there. That will then fix this into the back of that servo horn there, will it? Not quite a self-tapper, so it appears to be turning uselessly. No, it's not. Okay, so let's try the other one that appears to be a self-tapper. Yeah, that's quite happily tapping right the way through the servo horn. It's going to clip if it goes too far, so I wonder if I can use that to kind of make a pilot hole to this other one. Kind of works. A notch further. Fairly rigid, and I'm actually only feeling there the lash inside the motor. Drop in this one. Again, tap through here. Reverse that and use this tiny screw. Looks like I'm going to have to take this arm off of here again. This bit clearly looking like a foot of some kind. These are extraordinarily tiny. I guess that makes sense. Okay, if I can screw that in there. It isn't quite lined up. It's I'm having to actually drive it through this bit. I'm now having to hold the nut on without destroying that cable there. Some legs are going to be this way up, some legs are going to be reversed, left and right. Okay, so now we have a knee and a foot. So it looks like the next part goes around this knee part. That's what these nuts and bolts are for, and these are a lot, lot larger. Before dropping any bolts on this, I'll place it, the bolts sit this way. That seems to be pressuring the cable, which I don't like the sound of. Well, not too much, I suppose. But then what's stopping this just popping out of the top there? If that's held on this way, doesn't appear to be enough to hold it in place, but okay, I mean, let's, let's go with these instructions and assume they're not making it up. So they're saying like this, and then I tighten nuts against here. Being acrylic, I don't want to over tighten it because it will crack. Well, it's beginning to feel like it's going to get quite nice and rigid there, which is what I want. I want a rigid connection. I don't want this to be falling off or flopping off, given that well, it's the leg. So 
going to be holding up the robot. I'm probably also going to stick something around the bottom here like some electrical tape to give it some rubber grip where it gets a little harder to see what's going on. These are actually held in place there. There are moments where you feel like you need four hands trying to hold this servo and this bolt in place. Okay, and I think for this third part we're going to follow the same procedure we did for these two where we take sorry, bolt it on there, take the servo arm, three screws out, and I'll not bolt it down until later. Again, I'm using that one to tap the hole and then the kind of tiny screw to actually stay in place. Okay, we've got that in place. And the final part of the leg, yeah, there's plenty of clearance for that, is to bolt this in place. Okay, we now have one leg on the chassis. So now we've got one, we can kind of rinse and repeat for the other five. Okay, so I've now soldered the headers onto the servo board. I've put all of the servos and actually put all the legs together. It's a little bit flimsy in places, but maybe I can tighten it up. I'm a little bit afraid to tighten it completely up yet because I've not tested all these servos and some of them seem to be grating a bit. So I'm expecting to have to swap one or two out. Uh, I've got one spare at the moment uh, of this size, so it's possible I need to return and exchange a few. Let's wire these two together and start testing servos. This may add a little bit of bulk to the Node MCU, but it's going to make the wiring to other stuff much easier and perhaps less messy than using a breadboard for every bit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the Node MCU onto here. And these are already broken out in GVS style. Uh, now, although these look like servo connections, not all of them are suitable for that. I mean, there's ground and there's other things there. Uh, but however, it's going to be far easier to connect up and any sensors we want. So uh, this is another device that came from uh, IC Station, which they sent to me to uh, build something with. So it's a breakout for the ESP8266 for the uh, Node MCU. It's got a uh, nice marking here, so you can see which way up it goes. It's got a cigar style plug here, so 6 volts to 24 volts. And we're going to probably want the 6 volts so we can actually power this and these. If I plug it in via USB, is there actually going to be power coming out to the servers at all? So I'm going to be able to use two of these for two of the servos and then this for the other 16 because this is a 16 way controller. So we've got here four pins, for each of these pins here, handy, especially when you need more grounds. We've got an extra ground and three volts, ground voltage USB, five volt grounds, VI, which I presume is that, okay, voltage in again. And then these are just individually breaking out those pins. It's interesting how there's far fewer breakouts for that side than there are for this side but that's because this side has got all the data pins where they're going to be more useful and I wonder is that a tiny little LED to show that it's powered up there's some components under here that I've uh, just covered over which look like they're all involved in power so they're probably regulating this down to 5 volts or whatever voltage in for his. this is the uh, I2C pins ground VCC and I'm presuming the difference between VCC and V plus is VCC is voltage for logic and V plus is voltage for the motors. Let's get this handy thing around. And does that say SDD0, SD clock? Okay, SDO and clock. Oh, it does have SOSK for that ground. So I guess that's going to be for my I2C. Now, is it 5 volts or 3 volts? Logic, 3 to 5 volts. Okay, well. I guess if we're at 3 volts, logic here should be 3 volts. I don't know what OE is. Is that something like device enable? Uh, let's go look at the data sheet. As always, the uh, Adafruit tutorial for this is actually pretty good. Uh, they're using exactly the same servo as we're using. And uh, classic Arduino, other wiring. So VCC, ground, SDA, SCL, which we're course doing to our own device. So this one we do not connect. VCC pin is just power for the chip itself. If you want to connect servers or LEDs that use the V plus pins, you must connect the V plus pin as well. 
as high as 6 volt even if VCC is 3.3 volts. We suggest connecting power through the blue terminal block since this is polarity protected. We'll remember this, it's not a good idea to use the Arduino 5 volt pin and that also is the same for the node MCU. For your servos you're going to get brownouts, you can get uh, erratic overheat resets so on and we've seen that before with tankbot so uh, let's not do that let's make sure it's separately powered it doesn't suggest that actually it's going to put power out on that uh, vcc pin but i will tether it to get it to run initially connecting a servo there's nothing special here attaching more servos if you need other additional boards can be changed but i'll have a few data pins left on my uh, node mcu so i use those for one or two additional servos now, annoyingly, these are not servo style. Those are not GBS. That is the same pin broken out four times. In a way, it's handy for wiring, and maybe I'll use this for other breadboard projects, but uh, for this one, it means I might have to do a little tiny bit of point to point wiring for the two servos that are left. Okay, one small failing of this board. So they've got some lovely screen printing on there, you know, showing what's uh, going on. It's the Node MCU base version 1.0, but nobody's bothered to print the polarity of this connector. I am going to have to go and uh, probe each of these bits and see which one is ground and which one is uh, uh, the voltage. Yeah, not entirely impressed with that. It wouldn't have taken much on the silk screen to print the polarity of this connector. Probing on the ground pin here, and I can drum in there. And if I go on the centre pin, nope, go on the outside pin. You've got a beep so it's center positive okay that wasn't too hard to determine i'd still prefer they printed it a small bit of searching and it turns out that Ardafruit have actually got documentation for the pwm and uh, so here's their classes but this is a micro python version it may be just a matter of dropping each of these files on so we've got a MotorPy PCA9685, which is the chip upon this PWM controller. Servo Pi, Setup Pi, and Stepper Pi. Well, okay, we're not doing stuff with steppers controlling the servos. So we take an I2C device, the address we can leave there, frequency, degrees. So we'd almost say just I2C comma degrees if we use this. Oh no, we're creating a servo, sorry. And that's giving us the limit. So we'd create a servo with just the I2C bridge and maybe leave everything else defaulting. And we can see dot position and dot release. So let's have a quick look at what's in servo. So that imports this PCA9685 code. I guess let's have a look at what's in that. Okay, there's actually quite a lot. So we've got a write, read, reset something to set up frequencies, something to do your PWM where it's uh, packing, what is that, short words, two of them, and something to set duty cycles. Ustruct is what's allowing it to do this uh, struct packing and unpacking, and time, so we're doing a time.sleep somewhere here. Uh, here we go, sleep microseconds, so we're doing five microseconds. Uh, what I'm probably going to do then is let's uh, go and grab some of this code and uh, I guess I'll go and uh, check it out somewhere. I've actually wired all of these up to the Artifruit servo controller and the Node MCU, and I'll take you through some of the code, but so far what I've been doing is setting all of these to 90 once I've got something servo controlling for the two direct ones. And then I've gone round with a screwdriver and just tweaked them all to where I think 90 degrees should be. So I've gone for this kind of neutral position, which is everything kind of the, the toes at 90 degrees, the knee straight out and the hips straight out. And I've set those to 90 so they can flex from there. And I may later change my mind, but for now, that's where I'm going to start. The only problem is, as I've started a programming, I can't program it. I can't really see front from back. So this thing needs both a front and a back, and it needs a bit of personality. And I've got a fairly standard way of doing that, uh, which is to add this sensor. So I'm going to add this somewhere on the front and call that front of the robot. And although I could go ahead and do things like 3D print brackets and so on, I'm going to do what I usually do, which is start off with double-sided sticky tape. So I'm just going to double-side stick some foam on the back there, uh, attach it to the front here. I've then got sensors that I can run across to this control board when it's mounted. And we've got a clear front and back. I'm going to show a little bit of code. I've started to work out here. I'll put where the little IQ eyes will be just where each servo is going to go and so what I've got here is the zeros here represent the joints the dashes represent the legs 
and these are the servo numbers they're a little bit jumbled up that and how i plugged them in maybe i could sanitize that later and unstick some of these but then i can use maybe initialize those in this leg class i've created a servo list where i've actually used a couple of classes here to kind of gloss over the difference between the uh, i2c controlled servos with the uh, adafruit board and the direct controlled servers on the esp P. Now they're using some other utility classes and there is a to do which is uh, maybe I can collapse all of this together a bit but for now I'm going to try it just as is and then I'll define a leg for each of these and I'll control the legs. What I have been able to demonstrate is that I can actually position each one of them. So this is the MicroPython web REPL it's letting me send code directly to this robot. I've set the positions. Now here you'll notice I've done something sneaky where I've said S17 position equals S17 right angle. It's because this has been tested before I wrote my wrapper classes. So this is just using the uh, Artifruit library and the raw library that I picked up. I'm also using a free frequency of 50 for these uh, servos connected directly and I've left the default with the art of fruit also and a frequency of 50 Hertz every one of the servos positions there has been no problems there was some jitter on this one until I got the tuning right and there's a little bit of jitter if I lift some up some of the others start to take the strain so if I say take s dot position one up so s dot position one and we'll take that to 60 so maybe what I'd need to do is I need to do S position 7, 60. And actually, what I probably want to do is 7 to 110. So 60 on this one and 110 on this one. Oh, because they're set opposite ways, of course. So I have to account for that. And S dot position 12 to 60. And 1 at 45. I'm kind of trying to go for a bit of a tripod thing where these two legs and this one are taking up the strain but it's a little bit front heavy and this bit here is particularly flimsy where's that coming from there's a bendiness actually in the acrylic or is that in that joint down here not sure I have to be aware of that when I start playing with gates I've got the main parts together and these are what make up legs and the legs are all kind of able to move there's a few questions about whether these servos i mean the servos are going to carry the weight but uh these hip bits here appear to be just a little bit too flexible and i suppose it's going to be how i'm going to mount all of this on and power it at the moment i'm tethering it to a dc control and uh for early tests that may well be i can certainly take away tethering it to a pc as i should be able to power this whole lot from uh, this barrel jack presuming it has got the current to deal with these servos we'll have to play with that and figure that out uh, and maybe I'll go for power supplies for the two separate parts one for logic and one for servos we'll work that out what's going to be most interesting and I suspect I'll be on tethered power because it will be quite a long amount of uh, tinkering and playing with is uh, now I've kind of got a simple bit of code to collect them into legs uh, I can start looking at simple gates and that'll be in a again a follow-up video I'm not going to try and cover that in this because this video is already quite long uh, I mean you know come back to see more of what I do with this next and where I get it to move and so on and if you like this please give it a thumbs up please subscribe comments below if you've got ideas on what I could do with it next and how I could play with it more I would be most impressed I've enabled transcriptions and translations on uh, all my videos if there are any I've missed please let me know and uh, I'll put the link down below so you can do that I've also now set up a patreon account so uh, if you like what I'm doing and uh, would love to support me doing more then uh, you can also contribute to basically to Orion Robot so I can do more in my lab so I can take on maybe you know more video editing and get maybe get someone on board to help with that so you can get more video content I hope you've enjoyed this build I hope this video has been uh, as fun for you as it has been for me I was quite excited to receive these bits in the post and to start building this thing we'll see you next time so uh, go build great stuff and be awesome bye